today? Yeah. He yeah. does? need a drive. That was an historic first early today for Hitchbot. A couple heading out on a camping trip stopped to pick up the tiny talking robot for the premier leg of what's hoped to be a 6,000 kilometer trek. Hitchbot will be depending on the kindness and the curiosity of strangers to get from Halifax, Nova Scotia, right across the country to Victoria, BC. But before all that, our Nick Purden had the chance to hit the road with Hitchbot. Uh, normally, I don't pick up hitchhikers, but take a look at this. How's it going? Hello, I am Hitchbot. Jump in. You will have to pick me up. All right, I'll come get you. All right, watch your head. Let's hit the road, Hitchy. I, I gotta say, I like your boots. Thanks. And uh, how far are you going? Victoria. Wow. Good luck with that. Here we go. Hitchbot is the brainchild of university professors David Smith and Frauke Zeller. You, you put it all together and it does look like a robot that would not own a car. It looks like a hobo bot. A hobo bot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trash bot. Trash bot, yeah. If you add up all Hitchbot's parts, they cost less than $2,000. Yeah, but still, we The team that's taken over David's dining room table, this time when you ran it, we didn't they work for free. Their idea is simple. Drop the robot by the side of the road in Halifax and see if it can hitchhike by itself all the way to Victoria. And it blinks, right? Pitchbot blinks? It'll wink us. Yeah. yeah. And what was the idea behind the winking and the blinking and the smile? To make it more sociable. Well, we need, well, what people look for is some kind of human traces. So facial recognition, very often. So eyes and mouth is very important for us to really um, establish some kind of trust. Alone on the open road with rubber gloves for hands and a beer bucket for a body, trust is all you have. If Hitchbot strikes you as cute, that's the point. It shouldn't be really super tall, but more the size of a child, so then people use tend to feel protective and feel like, oh, there's something little, I might want to help it. Still, welcoming a robot into your car does go against pretty much everything we've been taught. Surely Hitchbot is more than nuts and bolts. What does this journey mean? It's about seeing how a robot gets by in our society while being wholly dependent on human beings. I don't know. <laughs> but the dog seems to think this is a little strange. Yeah. I've always marveled at how suddenly hitchhiking disappeared from the landscape. For David, it's more personal. He's hitchhiked across the country three times. Uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life. I, I met uh, really interesting people. I made uh, friends. So Hitchbot really is kind of meant to stimulate uh, reflection on the change in our culture, on our uh, changing kind of social psychology. And Hitchpot has people talking about the difference between cultures. This summer, one lucky Canadian driver will receive a free robot. <laughs> yeah, I saw him standing on the road, and now I just keep him in my couch. Americans are saying, oh, yeah, they're doing that up in, in Canada. Canadians are crazy. It'll probably work in Canada. It would never work here, because here in the States, we would put it into the ditch or shoot it. Ditch? Shoot it? Yikes. So what does Hitchbot have in its corner on the dangerous road, mm -hmm. other than its cute looks? Would you like to have a conversation? Um, sure, what do, you, what do you want to talk about? I can converse about many things. How about you tell me about yourself? My home is Port Credit, Ontario. Right. I have many hobbies. Okay. 
I love baking, horseback riding, watching hockey, yeah. watching soccer. I have an interest in the humanities, the natural. Did I mention that Hitchbot has the entirety of Wikipedia memorized? Now, being a know-it-all nerd could be useful when hitchhiking. It could also get irritating. Hoping to make new friends. Maybe we just be quiet for a while, eh? Yes. Yeah, we, we've uh, built into uh, the speech recognition uh, some commands so that people will be able to tell Hitchbot to take a nap, you know, more or less politely to silence uh, Hitchbot. What would it mean if Hitchbot makes it all the way to Victoria? It's a long way. It's beyond my imagination how big Canada is still. And um, it says a lot about our society, how we deal with it. Well, Hitchbot, this is as far as I go. Thank you. No problem, no. Just curious, any words of wisdom you've learned from the road? Just remember I am a product of human imagination. <laughs> I'll try to remember that. All right, I'm gonna get you out. You know the age-old question, can humans trust robots? Forget that. The question here is, can robots trust humans? And that's what Hitchbot's gonna try to answer this summer, one thumb at a time. All right. It was nice meeting you, Nick. Safe travels, my friend. What a lovely road. This reminds me of a poem. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler along Nick Purden, CBC News, on this lonely stretch of road.